Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry it's been a while. In this video, I will show you how to switch to a bioactive setup for your rack gauge. I will cover everything from measurements to building an acrylic bin and setting up your soil. Before diving into that, let me quickly explain what exactly a bioactive setup is. Okay, so lots of fun always talk about a bioactive setup, but what exactly is a bioactive setup? Well, the most basic way I can explain it is that it's a type of enclosure that uses invertebrates to keep the soil that's in the enclosure clean. So basically they clean up waste and everything, so you don't have to keep the soil clean, which is awesome. So what that practically means, if you want to switch to a bioactive setup for your rat cage, is that you will need suitable soil, which I will explain more on later, and you need a cleanup crew. You will see the abbreviation CUC a lot when you do research about this, and that stands for cleanup crew. Your cleanup crew are the invertebrates that keep the soil clean. You are definitely going to want to have springtails in there um, because they are super small, so the rats won't bother eating them. And um, yeah, they are really good for the soil to keep it healthy and clean. Um, so yeah, I chose springtails, but also tropical white wood lice. They basically do the same thing as the springtails, but I just really wanted a little bit of variation in my uh, soil, so I got those two. Um, they're a little bigger than the springtail, so there was a chance that the rats were going to eat it, but luckily my boys do um, really well with leaving them alone because I still see plenty, which makes me really happy. Um, but do keep in mind that if you go for different species of cleanup crew, because there's all types of like worms and beetles and... Um, isopods that you can use as cleanup crew but anything bigger than the springtails is mostly fair game to the rats and most rats will eat them so that's just something to keep in mind if they do it's safe for them but um yeah you will have to change out your cleanup crew if they eat them all of course that's why you're gonna want to have uh, springtails mostly because uh yeah like i said they don't eat them why would you want to go bioactive well first of all because it's a lot of fun <laughs> that's just my personal opinion i really love giving the rats um you know a, a natural sort of environment uh so they can also show natural behavior which digging is a basic need for rats if you have like a thick layer of coconut soil um imagine like the digging that they can do uh, they can build tunnels and everything and before this I had a dig box um, which was a lot smaller and obviously didn't have as thick of a layer of the soil and they dug around it a little bit but not as much as they do now so digging that's that's a, a big thing enrichment um, another benefit is um, it could definitely have health benefits because if they are uh, digging more that means they're also more active which is obviously really healthy for their bodies and the increased humidity that the soil will bring, because do keep in mind, the soil needs to stay moist, um, not wet, not dry, but moist. <laughs> um, yeah, that will increase the humidity levels in the cage uh, a little bit, but most rats actually do really well on that. And um, I've read of instances where rats also um, do better with respiratory issues with the higher humidity. Uh, but that's, I think, something that you're going to have to um, experience for yourself. Another benefit um, is that it's self-cleaning. I mean, I uh, used to use fleece as um, yeah, a bedding. So for me, it, it's not really that big of a difference because I still use fleece uh, in other parts of my cage. But for instance, if you use a different kind of substrate that you have to clean out every week and then throw it out, put new substrate in, then this is something that's really gonna help you because of your cleanup crew uh, and they will keep the soil clean, you don't have to change out the soil anymore. Once you reach a point where you're good, um, you, you shouldn't really have to change it out, which is obviously a really um, yeah, nice benefit for you as the owner because you have to do all the cleaning. Um, the only thing that you have to really do with your soil is um, keep it moist, like I said. So just pour in a little bit of water uh, once it gets a little drier. Uh, what I do is just use a spray bottle to keep it moist. 
end of year rats don't dig a whole lot or don't dig tunnels so you also have to make sure that every once in a while you turn the soil over but that's basically all you need to do which i think is great another benefit of going bioactive is that once it's set up it's pretty cost efficient think about it i mean if you are scooping out substrate every week and putting new in that's obviously going to add going bioactive obviously you're going to have costs switching because you need to have a bin if you don't already have uh, a deep enough bin to put the soil in you need to buy your soil you need to buy your cleanup crew you might want to get extra things like um, branches and whatnot to really you know tie it all in um, but once those costs are you know made then that that's it you might have to like top off your cleanup crew uh, once in a while or add a brick of um, coconut soil, but that's it. So in the longer run, I think it's, uh, it's more cost efficient, which who doesn't want that? <laughs> the last thing I want to talk about is how do I switch to a bioactive setup cage? Well, obviously I will explain more in uh, the rest of my video, but basically all you need is um, a bin to keep your soil in because bars obviously aren't going to work. Uh, you need your soil, you need your cleanup crew, and that's the super basic gist of it. Um, what I personally did, because we have a critonation cage, I made sure that we removed that bottom part of the bottom cage so that the acrylic bin that we made fits on that storage shelf right there. So I'm going to explain in the rest of the video how exactly you go about making a bin like that and how to set up your, um, your soil. Like I said, I wanted to keep this kind of basic because I have um, more information on my Instagram page. I made a highlight uh, with a lot of uh, commonly asked bioactive questions that you can check out. And what I really recommend if you would like to do this is check out the Facebook group naturalistic and bioactive red setups that is where i got most of my information because there's not a ton of information out there yet but that group is is amazing so if you want to switch um definitely go check that out so let's move on to the rest of the video where i explain how you go about doing this Okay, so the very first thing you need to do is take measurements for your acrylic panels. As you can see, my bin is already in because I forgot to film this part before. Always take the inside measurements of your cage because your bin will have to fit inside of the frame. Measure your long side from one end to the other and then measure the short side of your cage the same way. Up until where my finger is, is where you need to measure. This here lines up with the actual inside of the cage. As you can see, I measured the frame because it's easier to measure and it's the same size. After triple checking my measurements, I made a sketch of the bin with some simple calculations so I knew what size panels to order. Okay, let me walk you through this. So you want a bin with a bottom panel, a front panel, a back panel and two side panels. I took my measurements keeping in mind that I want my four panels to rest on top of my bottom panel. Under the sketch of the bin are the inside cage measurements. The bottom panel, A, measures 883 millimeters in length, so this is the long side of the cage, like the front, and it measures 578 millimeters in width, which is the short side of your cage. The length of the front and back panels, B, is the same as the long side of your bottom panel, A, which was 883 millimeters. The width of these panels will be how high your bin will be. So you don't have to measure this as this is a personal choice. I chose 40 centimeters. The length of the side panels, C, is the same as the short side of your bottom panel, A, which was 578 millimeters. The width will be the same as the front and back panels, B, since this is again the height of the bin. So in my case, 400 millimeters. When assembling the bin, you want your side panels to perfectly fit in between your front and back panels. To achieve this, you need to take the thickness of the front and back panels in consideration. I went with 4mm thick acrylic panels and wouldn't recommend any thinner than this. All you do is subtract 8mm of the total length of your side panels, C. That covers the 4mm thickness of both the front and back panels. Keep in mind that if you choose a different thickness, you subtract a different number than 8. Say you went with 5mm thick panels, you need to subtract 2 times 5 of the total length of your side panels. 
The last thing you need to do is subtract 5 millimeters of the total width and length measurements. The bin needs to comfortably fit in your cage, so it needs to be a little bit smaller than the frame, which is what you measured. In this case, that's 883 minus 5 is 878 millimeters. 578 minus 5 is 573 millimeters. And 570 minus 5 is 565 millimeters for your side panels. To sum it up, that means you need to order one piece of 878 by 573 millimeters. This will be your bottom panel. Two pieces of 878 by 400 millimeters for your front and back panels. And two pieces of 565 by 400 millimeters for your side panels. Keep in mind that these are for a coordination cage. Feel free to copy this for your own coordination cage. However, I do recommend measuring the inside measurements yourself since apparently there can be a small difference in even the same cages. The methods I use obviously apply to any size cage. Now we finally crunched all the numbers, you are ready to order your acrylic panels. These were my panels with the plastic still on. The only other things you need is some painter's tape and either a suitable sealant or glue or a heavy duty and water resistant tape. I personally wanted to go with a glue because it looks nicer in my opinion, but I couldn't find one that was both suitable for the material as well as safe for the rats. So in the end, I just used this, which is a extra power and water resistant transparent tape and that did the job perfectly fine in the end. Now you have everything ready to go, you can start making your bin. Doing this with two people definitely makes it a lot easier, so my dad and I made a fun project out of it. The first thing you want to do is clean the panels from any dirt or grease so the tape will stick properly. We use some ordinary dish soap for this. Now you can start putting your bin together. Use some regular painter's tape to hold the panels in place temporarily. Start with the long side so you can neatly fit a shorter side against it later. The shorter sides fit perfectly in between the front and back panels, remember? That's why it's easier to start with the long side first. Don't forget to place all panels on top of the bottom one if that's also the way that you took your measurements, which is what I did. Repeat this until your whole bin is put together. Make sure to neatly line up all the parts where two or more panels meet. Once your whole bin is put together with the painter's tape, you can start taping the inside of the bin with your heavy duty tape. Now if you're a perfectionist like we are, this is going to be a little tricky. Our tape was so thick and so sticky that it was kind of tough to work with. You can try folding the tape so the fold falls into the corners of your bin, or you can try and use a putty knife. We tried both, but found these methods to not work great with this tape, so we kind of just put it on and smooth it out in sections as much as possible before sticking more to the panels. Be careful not to pull the tape too much as you can kind of pull it out of shape. I think this just comes down to what works best for you. Try to get the tape as close into the line where your panels meet as possible and smooth out any creases as well as you can. You will most likely be left with some creases eventually though. Repeat this along all the sides of the bottom panel as well as the four corners. You want to make sure there's tape on every line where panels meet. I recommend using two layers before moving on to the outside of the bin. Once you're done with the inside, you can start taping the outside of the bin, which is a lot easier. Again, tape every line where panels meet, so four sides of the bottom panel and the four corners. Just in case, we also use two layers on the outside. We left a little bit of extra tape along the edges of the corners for extra strength. Just cut the tape down the middle and fold it down. Now that both the in and outside of the bin have two layers of tape, it's time to file down the top edges so tiny rat paws can safely grab them. This way you'll make sure the quite sharp edges become nice and smooth. And finally, we tested the bin with a little bit of water to make sure it's not leaking. That looks good to me! Now your bin is finished, let's move on to the soil and cleanup crew. I highly recommend using cocoa soil for animals, which is made from coconut husk and free from any harmful additives and chemicals. 
I personally use the plantation soil from Exoterra. It's a little more fibrous than other brands of cocoa soil I've tried, which is great for adding some texture to the soil. These come in compact bricks that you simply add water to for them to expand. For this size bin, I ended up using 14 of these bricks. To add even more texture, I also added three of these, Exoterra's cocoa husk bricks. They're made from the same material, but they're bigger chunks. Moving on to the cleanup crew. As I mentioned earlier, you'll definitely want springtails. They're tiny, the rats won't eat them, and they do a great job at keeping your soil clean. And no, these guys will not end up wandering around your house. I started out with two small containers of springtails, but quickly added one more and then another two because I found some mold on one of my branches. This simply meant that there were not enough springtails to keep everything clean. I do use a lot of natural materials in my soil, so if you don't do that, you might need less. Besides springtails, my only other cleanup crew are tropical white wood lice. They're a dwarf isopod that will be around 3 to 4 millimeters max. Your rats might eat them. Mine don't seem to, but that's why I didn't get any other bigger species. I ended up using three small containers of these. To be well prepared, I ordered my cleanup crew a little in advance. I just prepared one brick of soil and left them in a small bin with a lid that had some air holes in. Speaking of preparation, think about what else you might want to use to complete your new setup. This can be anything you want. I just had a birthday, so that's why I decided to get the boys some new things. If possible, it also helps to prepare some of the bricks of soil in advance. Preparing your soil is easy, just follow the instructions. You basically just add water, we did do a little less than recommended, and wait for the bricks to expand. I came back every now and then to just check and stir it up a little bit. While you're waiting on your soil, you have the perfect opportunity to clean out your cage and disassemble it. In case of a critter nation, it can be disassembled until you are left with just the storage part. Your bin will go right inside the frame, resting on the bottom rack. We didn't put any new wheels on for the added weight, but had I thought of it in advance, I might have done that. Our cage is still fine with the extra weight, but making extra sure can't hurt. Before adding the soil, I cleaned the bin with some baby water wipes and dried it off with regular paper towels. I gotta say, after all the prep work, that is one good looking bin. As you can see, the bin fits really nicely and not too snug in the frame, just like we wanted. Now with the bin in the frame, it's finally time to add our soil. I don't remember how many bricks this was, but I wanted to have a nice layer down before adding in my cleanup crew. At this point, we also put the bottom cage back together. With the bottom layer of the soil down, I'm adding my cleanup crew as a sort of middle layer. By this time, my chunks of cocoa husk were also ready to be put in. At this point, you can really just fill the bin with all your bricks, put the top of the cage back together, and set up your cage like you normally would. Let me quickly show you around my new bottom half of the cage. I used a lot of natural materials to complement the bioactive bottom. I used things like forest moss, cork hides, branches, and edible flowers and leaves such as marigold and apple tree leaves. The plant is a spider plant, and the plastic bin is what I call a nature discovery box, which is basically a foraging box with all kinds of natural materials. To add a touch of fall, I added an edible fall bouquet of dried grasses, wheat, and millet. Maintaining your soil is pretty easy. Just make sure it stays damp and gets turned over every now and then. Your rats will do this when they dig, but if they don't dig a lot, just turn it over yourself every once in a while. Your cleanup crew needs moist soil to survive, so you need to water it if it gets too dry. You basically need to have the soil clumped together when you grab it, rather than having it loose and dry. In the beginning I'd also check for mold, especially if you have branches and such in your soil. If you find some, give your cleanup crew a day or two to clean it up. If after two days it's still there, you can take that particular branch out and clean it yourself. 
I let mine soak in hot water and white vinegar after scrubbing the mold off. After the branch dried, I put it back in the cage and added extra springtails. If you keep up with your maintenance, you should be able to enjoy your soil for a long time. And that's it! Now you know exactly how to turn your rat cage into a bioactive setup. If you'd like even more information on this, be sure to check out my bioactive Instagram story highlight. You can also follow my bioactive vlog on IGTV or Facebook, where I update you on any developments with my own setup. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and to see you here next time.